Really pleased to announce a brand new series, Rate This Boss, where I cherry pick some of the most iconic leaders, managers and bosses in television and film and give my expert opinion on what they think they're like. Check it out. Captain Raymond Holt from the 9-9. So I think he is truly one of the best bosses I have ever seen. There's kind of a few things I'm going to pick out when it comes to it. So when it comes to delegating, he is absolutely spot on. So too often bosses will either throw everything at people and just leave them to it, or they just won't let go enough. But the balance that Holt gets between giving people that responsibility to kind of shine and step up, but also making sure he's always there to support them and kind of lead them through it where they need it is absolutely brilliant. I genuinely think it's an exhibition for us all in how to do it. He always supports his team, even when the opportunities are not in his department. So there was a couple of times where his team left his team and he was nothing but supportive because the opportunity was good for them, which is a huge green flag for me because I hate bosses who just kind of hold on and don't do anything else. Finally, when his team does make some mistake, he always, always takes the blame. You know, he very much views it as his department, his team, his responsibility. So even if he had nothing to do with it, he always shields his team and takes that responsibility on whilst chastising them when necessary. So he absolutely gets that bang on. And his moral compass is perfect. And he leads that by example. Too often people will say, you've got to do this and then do the complete opposite. He absolutely sets the bar and leads from the front. So I think he's absolutely brilliant. In fact, the only thing that's going to stop him getting the perfect score is I do think there's a slight EQ element where he just misses the mark from every now and again on a more emotional level. I am in incredible pain. Overall, one of the great bosses, nine and a half out of ten. Dumbledore. So Dumbledore is easily one of the most competent at his job and what he does. I think that can be a real source of inspiration for a boss and the leaders when you know this person is the absolute best. Secondly, he really does seem to care about what he does in society. You know, he can clearly be making a huge amount of money in the wizarding city equivalent or whatever it is. However, in his case, he goes to school, he teaches because he genuinely seems to care. So for me, a huge sort of green plus for him there. As well as that, he really does put himself first in a danger perspective. So if there's risks, if there's that, he very much quick to sacrifice himself for one of his students and he really does treat people equally there as well. So another big, big fan. Where he does fall down slightly for me is the transparency element. So I do think teams respond to knowing what's going on and having a clear direction strategy. Too often Dumbledore is kind of having his own sort of side gigs going on, not giving everyone the full pan, giving people bits but not everything. And so there will be the only part he falls down. But overall, fantastic leader, 8 out of 10. That was fun. Jordan Belfort. Just as a caveat, I'm going off the film, not the person. I don't know the person. So this is pure Wolf of the Wall Street analysis. So firstly, what I would say is he's obviously a very inspiring leader in the sense of the loyalty he kind of builds up amongst his team is obviously absolutely next level. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. Full credit for that. And the other thing I'll say is he's actually an exceptional trainer. Like he takes a huge crew of people who've never had experience in finance whatsoever and builds them out to obviously be very, very successful. So in that sense, a lot of pros, very good at his job, very inspirational, all that sort of thing. Now, I think it's safe to say, however, from a cultural perspective, there are one or two red flags, you know, everything from the sexism, the homophobia, you know, all of that sort of thing is obviously a real red flag to a toxic business. It was all this legal. Absolutely fucking not. The other part of it is when it came down to it, he did throw his team under the bus. So when it came to kind of saving himself, he very much did that and threw himself under the bus in return to this. So a lot of pros in the sense of like what he can do, but this is some real, real red flags on the other side. So I'm going to go split down the middle. I'm going to give him a six out of 10. Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. Who the devil are you? Absolutely appalling. So this color copy is really obvious. First, he's obviously an awful person, right? He never remembers his employee's name. It's Tuesday the name of this guest He always like sets up weird cultural initiatives that basically just seem to like want to kind of almost poke the bear and to see how bad it goes for his team. So really vindictive, really evil, you know, awful, downright awful person across the board from a boss perspective. But the second thing I would add on top of that is he's not even that successful. And what I mean by that, he inherited his money from his family. So he's one of those absolute iconic people who think they're unbelievably successful just because they got born into money. So I, you know, the I would all, like I wouldn't accept his boss style, but if he at least made the money initially, I'd have a little bit more respect for him. But overall, absolute worst. I can't give him anything above one out of ten. Michael Scott, one of the most loved characters of all time, but actually a really, 
really hopeless boss. So there's a few things he's got going for him, right? One, he truly does care about his employees. And two, he's actually a very good salesman. So, you know, you see plenty of examples where he obviously was very good at his job and got promoted to kind of the manager. But in a lot of ways, he's absolutely hopeless. And, and there's two kind of two main parts I'm going to talk about. Firstly, he's the classic example of an incompetent boss. And the problem with having an incompetent boss is the stuff he should be doing isn't being done and it gets pushed down the chain. So a lot of people below him have to kind of pick up the slack and actually do the work, often with no extra pay or no extra credit. So that's kind of a big one. But the second part of Michael Scott is he really struggles to hold that, what I call a tough conversation. He was not happy at all when I offered him this job and then I told him he didn't get the job. If you want to be liked the whole time, that's actually not a great, it's it's not the worst trader boss, but it's not the best one because sometimes you do have to have hard conversations with people and it's important you take that responsibility because it's not fair to put that on other people. So very friendly, he's obviously very funny and all of that sort of thing. But no, not a good boss at all. I'm going to give him a four and a half out of 10.